Welcome to the Softland Central Podcast, your home for market entry knowledge and resources. Softland Central is brought to you by Softland Partners, an online marketplace to help you find best fit resources for your market entry. Find them at softlandpartners.com. Welcome to the Softland Central Podcast, and my name is Bill Kenny. It's a real pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, we have uh, an incredibly special guest, uh, Dan Glazer from Wilson Sonsini Law Firm. He's based in London. The firm is global, uh, based in Silicon Valley in San Francisco. Uh, welcome, Dan. Hi, Bill. Thanks for having me today. Well, thank you. And uh, just to, to give a little bit of context to, uh, to what we're gonna talk about today, um, our podcast is listened to uh, primarily by uh, everyone from uh, entrepreneurs who are looking to enter new markets, cross borders, and, uh, and expand their business to trade and investment professionals and other types of support uh, entities that are looking to help these uh, companies uh, succeed. And so um, the topic we're going to get into today, certainly with the, the legal ramifications of, uh, in particular, entering the U.S. and some of the things that uh, companies uh, will need to consider and navigate is really just spot on for, uh, for this audience. So um, again, thank you for being uh, with us today, Dan, and uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, to hopping into our topics. Sure thing. All right, so first, you know, obviously we wanna uh, make sure the audience knows uh, about you and about Wilson Sonsini. Um, certainly that will add quite a bit of context to our, our conversation, but do you wanna uh, take a, a minute or two and just sort of give us a little bit of overview on your background? You've been in London now, I know for a few years, uh, and, then, and then also the firm. Sure. Um, so, so the firm, as you, as you mentioned, uh, Silicon Valley-based law firm. Uh, we, we've been going since uh, 1961, uh, working with uh, technology and life sciences and growth, growth companies uh, through all stages of, of their life cycle, L literally from uh, first in incorporation up through um, I IPO and, 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 and beyond. Um, you know, started in, in the Valley, um, you know, expanded throughout the, uh, the, the, the U.S., uh, to the different uh, sort of you know venture back tech technology hubs around around the states, um, you know, and then uh, formally came came to London uh, a couple of years ago, um, and so I I head up the firm's uh, U.S. expansion group, and and I'm the the founding partner of, of the the London office, um, and you know what our what what our London office does is, is that we, we 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 sometimes think of it as, as augmented reality Silicon Valley, right? Is that that we are we're we're a team of Americans in London, working with European uh, technology and life sciences companies through um, all stages of, of the U.S. life cycle, right? Launch, scale, raise money, and exit in in the United States, um, you know, and and sort of the the, the inflection point. Of where we you know first meet meet companies typically in, in the UK or, or, or on the continent is is they'll, they'll come to us and say right you know I'm I'm launching in the US or I'm selling into the US I'm looking to raise money in the US you know what what do we do next um, you know and and that's where where we engage and you know not only you know tr try 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 to provide legal advice but also um, you know I, I, I think a, a hefty dose of uh, hopefully you know useful strategic uh, and business advice as well. That's fantastic. And uh, now, how long have you been with Wilson Sonsini? Um, coming up on about uh, four years now, I, I, I guess it is. Um, you know, time, time, time flies. <laughs> I bet. And, and that whole time in London, or were you U.S. based for a while? Uh, com commuting uh, back back and forth for 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 a while. Um, I used to joke that I was a uh, for a long time. I was a, a cloud based lawyer as a service platform, <laughs> uh, or a or a LAS uh, platform, as 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 you might you might refer to it as. Uh, uh, you know, de definitely, I I think uh, an, an organization that was sad to see me formally move to London was United Airlines. I'll just put in a little a little plug for them. They they served me very very well over the years. Uh, you know, commuting on uh, you know on a pretty regular basis to the to, to the UK. Um, but yeah, no, spent a, spent a num number of years. Uh, you know, going back and forth. Um, you know, sort of built built building up the the, the foundation for the formal launch um, in the uh, the summer of eighteen. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep. So let's uh, start and and talk a little bit about uh, market entry 
companies and, you know, in your work in helping European and UK based uh, companies uh, come to the US, what are some of the, the common mistakes that you see companies make in that process? So, uh, you know, I, I think the, the first decision I think a company needs to make coming out of the UK or Europe when, when let's say expanding to the US is, you know, what, what does US expansion mean in, in this context, right? Does it mean selling in remotely? to um you know to american customers Amer or selling to Amer Amer american users um does it mean hiring contractors to sort of f fly the flag for you in the united states to identify opportunities uh does it mean you know hiring local em em employees and setting up um you know local u.s operations does it mean um relocating uh, let's say UK or Euro European employees over to the US. Does it mean buying a US company? Right? Do, does it mean, let's say, entering into some sort of um, you know, exclusive distributor relationship, a partnership with an American company where you're, you're working with that company to, 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 to get into the US, right? Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's important to, to sort of define the, 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 the go-to-market strategy at the very, the very, very beginning. Um, you know, we, we certainly see companies who I think sometimes get a little bit too gung-ho and say, right, you know, we have to create the, the, this massive U.S. presence, but actually from an ROI standpoint, they, 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 they would do uh, a little bit better, maybe, maybe taking a different approach. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that that kind of leads to, I think the, 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 un, one of the most common mi mistakes that, that we see um, with, with, with companies coming out of the UK and Europe go, going to the US is that, is that you know, I think some of them go too, too quickly uh, and, and some of them don't go quickly enough. And, and I'm gonna sort of level set um, by, by saying, what I mean by that is when the, when the company decides to formally launch U.S. operations, right? And typically, that's some combination of hiring local empl U.S. employees and and potentially supplementing that with uh, employees who they send over from from HQ in the U the U.K. or Europe. And what I mean by 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 going too uh, too 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 quickly is especially in the tech space, we we come across a lot of companies who who say, right, I got I to gotta go to the U.S. and launch in the U.S. because I'm a tech company, therefore I need to go to the United States, right? And, and, and I, I do think that for companies who haven't yet built a U.S. business before or haven't had experience in the U.S., there, there's sometimes, obviously not, not with all companies, but sometimes with some, some companies, there's this perception that, you know, the streets in the U.S. are paved with VC gold, you know, if, if it works in the UK or Europe, it must work in the US. All we need to do is, is get over there and, you know, the, 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 the millions and billions will, will be ours. But actually, you know, having success in the UK or kind of the European market is no guarantee and, and very often not even necessarily a predictor of success in the US, um, you know, for any num number of reasons, not the least of which is that, um, you know, the US is uh, not only is, 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 it, is it a different, um, let's say, you know, business and consumer market than, than the UK and Europe, but it's many different uh, markets and, in, in, you know, that, you know, what, what companies will and, and what individuals will, will buy in the Northeast is not necessarily the same as what they'll look for in the Southwest or the Northwest, right? And, you know, what, what we find is, is a much better predictor of success is when the company is pulled into the United States by customer traction and user growth. And then it follows that up by launching operations as opposed to launching operations and then, and then basically trying to figure out whether or not there was product market fit there. In other words, and let me sort of summarize that, is that gen generally speaking, you want to be pulled in by product market fit. And then and then go scale from that as as opposed to going to the U.S. and then trying to figure out whether you have product market fit in the first place. Right, the the latter approach is um, um, sort of fraught with, with 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 risk in terms of wasting time and, and money and, and effort. So that that's kind of what I mean about sort of going too quickly, right? But then there's the other another type of company, and we we we've seen this over the years, which I, I'm not necessarily I'm not sure that we would have seeing this coming initially is that there, there are some companies that do have that product market fit and, and launch in, in, in the States and, and, and begin to trade there and do business there. 
but but ultimately don't move quickly enough and don't scale quickly enough and move aggressively enough to compete with American com competitors, right? And and I, I do think on average in, in, the, in the United States, especially among venture-backed companies, you know, where on average the venture rounds tend to be a little bit larger than in Europe, there's, there's this sense of, you know, scale, scale quickly, um, you know, spend money aggressively if, if you have to, even if you're a loss-making business, in order to capture market share, right? In, uh, in other words, as, as uh, you know, as, as, as I think that we, we've seen over time, on average, American companies will, uh, will aggressively spend if there is ROI. And I think that that is not necessarily always the, 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 the case in Europe, I think especially because there's a little bit more Historic, historically, at least, it's it's changing significantly. But historically, there has been a little bit more of a focus, um, and I think in the investment community on on hitting um, profitability or hitting break even a little at an earlier stage in the company's life cycle relative to, let's say, on average, the investment community in the U.S. And that leads to, you know, I think an approach to company building that focuses a little bit more on you know, on, you know, hitting prof profitability, right? Not necessarily spending based on ROI, but, but spending based on how, how close are you to, to profitability. And if you're going in competing with American companies that are spending aggressively, you know, you, one of the things that we've seen is that some, some companies coming out of the UK or Europe can get overtaken by American companies who are moving quickly and, and a little bit more, more aggressively. That, that makes total sense. The idea that, yeah, uh, going in too quickly before you have sort of customer demand or demand centered uh, market entry and then uh, not going in quickly enough and having somebody else essentially eat, eat your lunch. Um, when you open this, you talked about, and I thought it was r really uh, intelligent about the idea of, uh, you know, what does uh, market entry or, or U.S. expansion mean? Um, is is this something that you help uh, your clients sort of work through? Because I would imagine some come, and we see this, uh, is that they, you know, you ask a, a question like that. Um, and um, in some cases, you get sort of the deer in the headlights or a kind of a, a confused <laughs> um, uh, uh, sort of uh, response. And um, uh, is this a something that you help your clients sort of uh, rationalize and, and begin to, to, to um, uh, understand uh, for their own uh, strategy building? Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it's, it, it's an important part of the first discussion or two that we have with, 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 with companies when they, when they say that they want to, you know, go to the U.S. and attack the U.S. market is, 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 is to figure out, um, you know, what, what, it, what, what is their hoped for you know end end game right um sure but also i mean and and, and also i mean you know what what are they able to do in in the near term as well and, and i think the the good thing at this point having having worked with with you know certainly spoken with and worked with hundreds if not thousands of companies over the past you know several years is is that we there's a little bit of pattern matching right mm -hmm. that if, if 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 a company comes in let's say very early stage, let's say it's just come out of an accelerator, right? Um, in, in, in London and says, right, I, I wanna go raise my, my seed round in, in, in the US from US v, v, VCs. Well, that, that leads to, to a discussion where um, the reality is, is, is that if, if they're committed to that, really what they're saying is they need to build the business in the United States and you probably need to move um, you know, some portion, if not the, the entirety of the executive team um, to, to the United States to do that, right? It is extremely hard. And, you know, we have the, the data to back it up is extremely hard and rare to, for a, a U.S. only uh, investor, uh, VC investor, uh, to, to lead a seed round into a U.K. Own, only company, right? I mean, a true cross-border round. Uh, you know, at, at that stage, it's decision point and it's a discussion we'll have with the company, like, you know, how committed are you to this? Um, and if you are super committed, you know, that it's, it's U.S. or bust at, at seed, you know, you probably need, need to look seriously at moving to the U.S. Um, you know, whereas, let's say a little bit later stage, let's say that, that they're, um, you know, raised a few million heading toward a Series A, 
and the discussion is, you know, we're starting to get traction in the U.S. We're selling in remotely. Um, you know, we 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 have a contractor who's who's doing well. We need to we need to hire a team in 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 the U.S. Then it's a discussion of okay, well, you know, let's let's talk about what the capital requirements are to build out, let's say, a U.S. sales team. Um, you know, and the, the different administrative aspects, the logistical aspects of launching in the U.S. You know, given what you've done to date. Given what what your what your network is, um, the profile of the company does it make sense to let's say raise that round of funding in, in the UK? Does it make sense to raise that round of funding in in in, in the US? Um, you know, another, another company might 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 come in and say, listen, you know, we're we're selling products in in the United States, and I'm thinking about US expansion, and we'll we'll talk it through. And actually, there's no reason to set up US operations. They're, they you know they they've got a nice pipeline. Um, sale, sales pipeline going, selling in remotely. All they really need is just a, you know, a U.S. facing web, web website that that reduces friction, right, among U.S. U.S. customers, U.S. US buyers. Um, so, while I'm not going to say that you know that that each, you know, that each um, each company is is unique. I mean, there are certainly there are certainly patterns that that, that we see, and there's sort of. I would say let, let's say six or seven different broad categories of companies that we would see in terms of where they are with their sort of Euro, U.S. expansion and fundraising path. And and with each of those six or seven, I, I'm sure there's some uniqueness for each company, but but that there is a bit of it sounds like a bit of a template, or yeah, uh, you know, you know, I don't mean to sound so formulaic, but but that there's a, a little bit of a standard that it sounds like you can go to for those those patterns. Yeah, I mean that that there 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 certainly is. I mean, at this stage, in terms of you know working working with, with companies, we we can kind of fall fall back on on a fair fair bit of uh, of, of of data and say, well, listen, you know these here's you know a few few dozen companies that were similarly situated, um, and you know and and this 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 is what what they found worked for them. So here's something that that you you may want to think about. Right, and then we'll we'll sort of drill drill down and 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 go through, you know, what the similarities are, but also what the differences are, right? Um, you know, in 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 the end, you know, it it, it ultimately d depends on what 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 the product offering is, what the what the executive team look looks like, how much capital that 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 they have, but 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 ultimately, um, you know. It, it's not in, it's not re reinventing the wheel, and and I think that that's actually something that we find puts companies at at ease, um, is that on the one hand, the decision to come out of the UK or in, in Europe, um, and you know jump across the pond, you know as as they say, and begin the business or extend the, the business to arguably the most competitive, um, but potentially mo mo most lucrative and um, you know economy business environment in the world, it can seem pretty daunting. But on the other hand, um, you know, when when you sort of talk it through and, and you realize that, you know, hundreds of companies have faced similar issues and and have you know gotten through this and su succeeded, that actually can be pretty 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 comforting. Hmm, that's a uh, that's a really uh, I think a sage way to put it. It's uh, yeah, having the it's almost uh, I'm I'm a sailor, so I think of of navigating right and in, in, in sailing. There are waypoints, there are lighthouses and various uh, references that allow us to, uh, to navigate. And, and we can only do that because someone has been there before us. Um, That's right. And so yeah, it, it's, only yeah. It, it's a, it's a well-traveled path. Yeah. Right. And, um, and, and there are, there are markers al 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 along the way. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not as obvious, but, but they're there if we're looking, right? Um, so, uh, well, and I think that's a, a perfect segue actually into in sort of, you know, that, that particular point. Um, and I, I know uh, you can't talk about uh, specific clients by name, but I was hoping we might be able to talk about, you know, sort of company A uh, in this, you know, whatever industry um, had this fact pattern and, and here's, here was the playbook or, um, or whatnot that worked for them, but are there uh, some example um, uh, hypothetical companies that we may talk about that um, you, you'd say got it right? And we talked about mistakes, so let's maybe go yeah. to the positive side of the ledger. <laughs> yeah. So, so actually, you know, I'm I'm happy to, to sort of lay out the um, the the 
the the let's say the most common playbook mm. for 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 a company let let's say you know i mean i'll, I'll you know, coming out of the uk or europe i'll, I'll set up a straw man right mm -hmm. um and 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 sort of play that out and 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 i think the, the most common company that we might see let, let's say is a is a b2b SaaS company let, let's say a b2b SaaS company coming out of london um that is um let's say between seed and series a um, and has been and after its seed, but 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 before its Series A round, um, is is getting some 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 traction in the United States, selling in re remotely, right? And and here's here's how we would sort of see that playing out, right? Is that is that at first th there would be periodic sales uh, here and there, um, let's say from the executive team attending conferences or otherwise going through their network, and or maybe because their existing UK Euro Euro European customers have got um, US operations. One way or the other, they 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 start building up a uh, you know a pipeline of of customers and and, and a bit of revenue out of the United States, and and at some point. Um, they realize that actually we're going to get um, you know, even more opportunities if we've got someone on the ground flying the flag, but we don't necessarily have the budget or the certainty uh, yet that um, you know to to hire a, a U.S. team, right? So, so the, the middle ground that we'll often see in that context is hiring a, a part-time contractor, right, sales agent um, in in the United States. Who who was out there identifying deals and 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 helping the uh, the you know the the, the the company scale a little bit in in the United States right and that's um, you know that that contractor that that sales agent you know can be retained out of the the UK company right you don't need to set up full full blown U.S. operations full blown U.S. structure in order to do that um, but it but it, at some point after that hopefully um, the company um, the company identifies even more opportunities and says, you know what, we, we really are being pulled into the U.S. There's clear traction now. We want to go out and hire a proper U.S. sales team and, and set up more formal operations. And at that point, right, the, the capital requirements to hire, you know, a U.S. team, given, um, given on average the higher U.S. salaries relative to the U.K. and Europe, generally leads um, the company at that point, let's say, to go out and raise a Series A round. Um, in other words, and, and, and this is actually a very common discussion that I have um, you know, here in, in, in the UK and in Europe, on average, the US expansion round of venture capital tends to come from the UK or Europe, um, in a, in, not from the US, right? In other words, on average, um, US venture capital financing tends to follow from US commercialization, not the other way around, right? And I think that that is... That is something that's not always self-evident, but that's certainly something that the data has sort of borne out, is that it's usually after the company has launched and scaled in the U.S. that, that the U.S. venture capital uh, tends, to, tends to follow. So let's say the company then raises a round of capital um, from, 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 let's say, from U.K. investors for the purpose of expanding to the U.S., and then it will take that, that, that capital um, and then look to re re recruit and hire, let's say, a local U.S. team and maybe send some people over from HQ as well. And, and I will say that in our experience, uh, I mean, and we, we, we've seen US teams set up in all different ways, like only local hires, only, only um, transferred hires. I think on, on average, what we've seen is the, the most uh, likely to succeed is when you combine local hires um, who, who are familiar with, with the US market with individuals uh, who have sort of the, the, the DNA of, of the business, right, from, from HQ. And especially um, when, um, helpful is if you can send, you know, the first couple hires who you, who you have in the U.S., let's say, over to HQ um, and have them spend, let's say, a couple of, couple, couple of months um, at HQ and get them truly integrated within the business and then send everyone over, over together, right? Um, and, you know, and I think at that point, the, 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 the administrative or log logistical playbook, you know, tends to be, assuming that, let's say, you're starting with the U.K., Limited company at that point, you know, you 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 tend to set up, let's say, a, a, a Delaware C Corp, um, you know, wholly owned subsidiary of the UK parent company, right? Um, and and you you employ the US employees through that Delaware C C corporation, and you you bring them in on employment documents that are, are appropriate and tailored for the relevant states 
um, that you have employees. In other words, if you have New York employees, you would have New York employment documents. If you have Florida employees, you have Florida documents, right? Um, but they're all hired out of, as the employees, they're all hired out of your, your new Delaware corporation, um, right? You would then, you'd set up a U.S. bank account. Um, you would set, you, you would get a U.S. tax advisor to help with uh, things like getting your, your uh, employer identification number um, and, uh, you know, your, your, your various tax filings. You would, uh, let's say, extend your business insurance from uh, let's say from 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 the UK to the US to to, to ensure that your business activities in the US are covered, um, and and then you would figure out HR and 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 admin things like um, payroll, uh, retirement benefits, health insurance. And one very common approach, and it's not universal, but I would say a common approach for for um, let's say seed Series A, Series B backed companies uh, going into the US on on the HR front is to use what's called a professional employer organization where they're 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 co-employing the 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 employees uh together with 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 with, with delaware's subsidiary um and then the um the, the the peo is uh is is providing um you know the health insurance and retirement retirement plan and and payroll and, and the like and but 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 those are the main areas right so it's you know legal tax insurance banking um, and HR and admin, um, you know, and, and I guess I, I would also throw in Im Im immigration. If you are sending anyone over from HQ, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we had, it's a little bit different now, you know, sort of speaking in, in the COVID-19 environment, but I think um, historically we had been seeing, um, you know, uh, work, work visas about four to six months um, that, that it would take. So, so in terms of planning, if you're sending any, anyone over, um, you know, sort of think ahead four to six months in order to get the visas uh, over the line. But the other items, you know, the legal tax insurance, et cetera, that, all that work can be done in typically in a matter of weeks. Cool. So and I, certainly uh, you mentioned COVID-19 and, uh, uh, you know, it's certainly very uh, timely today and topical. Um, are you seeing in the, the first um, sort of uh, step in the process you had mentioned for that uh, straw man company was the idea of hiring uh, a sales agent uh, to um, you know sort of validate uh, market demand and and begin building the client base uh, or to augment what's being done from from corporate? Um, are you seeing more? You know, I think that's always been a, a a strategy, uh, but are you seeing more of a shift to that in the sort of in the you know in the last two months as we've uh, sort of grappled with this uh, pandemic and uh, and do you what and I guess what do you expect you know in that uh, space over the next uh, six to twelve months will be there be more of a shift to that strategy for for many companies for marketing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I th I, I think almost necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, that there, there's, there's going to have to be, um, you know, I, I certainly, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a common discussion I, I, that I, I certainly would have with, with, with companies over the past few years is, is that there would be somebody very often the, the CEO or head of head of sales, let's say back in, in the UK and Europe, who was regularly traveling. I mean, uh, you know, a couple times a month, even to the United States to, you know, win, 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 new new customers to negotiate deals go to conferences etc and that was and that was how they were starting to build up presence right and, and brand recognition in, in the us um right now that that's not really possible <laughs> um you know travel is certainly cur curtailed in-person meetings are curtailed um I mean, you know, speaking now in April 20, 20, 2020, that that's that strategy is in the short term not not really viable. Um, is it going to change? You know, are we get by 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 the summer? Uh, you know, can can founders get back on that plane? And, you know, from 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 Europe and, and and go to New York and go to the Valley and and meet 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 customers and and raise raise capital. Don't know, right? Um, in the meantime, you know that we're those companies are going to have to leverage. Um, you know, local local U.S. hires, local U.S. contractors, and they're going to have to leverage, um, you know, the um, uh, you know re remote video, you know, vi video video facilities. Um, you know, one thing that we're already seeing, and and I think this is this has been an interesting dynamic, 
is, you know, one of the, the friction points, let's say if you're a non-US company um, going in and, and let's say selling, um, selling into the US is, is, is the sense by the American customer that, you know, you really need to be on the ground in, in the US. But, but it's funny because in a matter, in, if you think about it, in some respects, nobody is on the ground <laughs> right, right now, right? Because we're, wh whether you are technically a domestic-based U.S. business or, or you are not technically a domestic U.S.-based business, we are all, in some respects, remote, <laughs> even, if we were, even if we are in the same city. Sure. And, and, I, and I can tell you, I've, I've seen a, a few enterprising companies you know, use that uh, to level the playing field, right? Now, if you are, let, let's say, a European company that is willing to work U.S. hours, um, and um, let's say have a U.S. facing website that has a U.S. phone number in it, all of which you 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 can do, you know, from 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 Europe. Well, you know, what's what's the difference be, be, be between the company that's based in New York and the company that's based in Berlin at that point, right? right. I mean, there isn't necessarily any, you know, any difference. And then it comes down to you know who's got the 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 more compelling offering. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's one of those sit, sit situations where, where you can sort of see, strangely enough, a little bit of a silver lining or at least an opportunity, you know, if you are a, a non-U.S. company is, is that, you know, you, you, you can use this as an opportunity to level the, 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 the playing field and, and maybe take off the table the question of geography and place the focus more squarely on competing with American companies based on the quality of offering. No, that, that makes total sense. Uh, and yeah, it, and it, it's, it, you know, I guess it's, as we've thought about it too, and, and I love your thoughts on this, is it, you know, it, it certainly seems reasonable that borders will open up in stages, um, you know, whether that's um, I, I intra-country or uh, uh, in, inter-country, you know, certainly, you know, the, you know, from certainly opening up the UK, um, will probably be a different date than opening up the UK's access into certain countries in Europe. Um, and likewise, uh, uh, any country's access into the US as well. And, you know, even now, you know, going from one state to another in, in the US, even if, you know, you're visiting your parents or anything like that is, you know, depending on the state is, you, you may get stopped uh, at the border and, and asked about where you're going. Um, and it's, it's certainly, seems uh, logical that 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 the opening of borders will be staged and so uh, the strategy you're talking about the the idea of sort of mirroring a u.s presence um heck you can even get an address easily today with so many co-working spaces um and you know kind of the nominal cost of of having a uh, an address um but uh, uh that uh, notion of mirroring a u.s presence or whatever country uh, that you're entering, uh, it certainly makes a lot of sense. And, and it's probably not a bad long-term strategy uh, as well. Yeah, and I mean, it, it really does, um, you know, remain to be seen uh, whether this is the beginning of a, of, of, a, of a change in dynamics where we, we really are, you know, we, do, we really do get more, 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 more comfortable, um, you know, transacting business and building relationships. Um, that really is what it is, right? And building relationships over, um, you know, over, over, over video, right? right. And, um, you know, and, and the, the, the more effective that a company can, can be at that about can, can conveying, um, you know, its potential value add to, 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 to its customers. I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge financial advantage, right? And it's a huge scaling advantage. Um, that 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 company may 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 be able to to have you know and 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 that that that's why the, you know the current environment could end up being you know a pretty significant um, you know op, 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 opportunity I mean an opportunity to um, try out new new business models um, you know it's you know as they say necessity is the mother of, of invention and it would not surprise me at all if if um, you know one of the long term um, outcomes. Um, of um, you know of of the environment that we find ourselves in is is that we 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 do switch to um, you know, evolve let, let's say in, into different models of trans transacting business and building relationships. Yeah, no, makes makes total sense. And yeah, it, as you said, 
uh, time will tell. <laughs> we'll see. And I would imagine there'll be some variability based on industry and, and so on as to what the customer will accept and, and demand uh, to transact, I suppose. Um, so you you have a, a very unique view and unique position as the head of Wilson Sonsini's um, U.S. market expansion practice. And uh, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts around um, you know, what is, what's uh, sort of unique or different about the U.S. market uh, versus the, you know, the companies that are currently uh, doing business in Europe? What should the companies expect when they uh, come into the U.S.? Uh, what are kind of the top things that are different? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think that um, first, you know, don't expect that, that, that the U.S. is a, is a single homogenous market, right? Um, I was sa sa saying this b before, is, is that, you know, the way that you, tra tra the way that you interact, right, and transact business in, in New York won't be the same necessarily as in Silicon Valley, as in, as in necessarily at, you know, at Atlanta or, or, or Dallas or Chicago or whatever. Um, you know, so understand that, that when you when, when when you talk about doing business in, in America, it, it's actually you know it's like saying doing business in in Europe, right? Um, the way that you do business in, in Germany is not the same as the way that you would necessarily do do business in 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 France or Switzerland, Netherlands, etc. Et um, I mean, I think one one thing that um, I think the, the, a bit of feedback that we get from UK and European companies is that they are. Uh, I think often pleasantly su surprised at how open uh, Americans are to do, do, doing business. Um, you know, I think on on average, um, you know, um, American American buyers, American customers, when they find something that they think provides value, um, and uh, that, that they will move relatively quickly. Right? Again, th this goes back to the the sort of ROI point I was making in a slightly different context earlier. Um, that if American companies see that, that you can provide va value add, um, you know, they will, they, they will seize upon that. Um, but, you know, I think also, and again, this is feedback that we've gotten from many, many, many UK and your, 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 your European companies is that, uh, you know, on, on average, American customers want to see American buyers want to see American reference points, American proof points. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give you an anecdote um, that, uh, you know, that, that I always get, get, a, get a chuckle out of, which is that there's a company that, that we know that came out of Europe, sort of sells, uh, you know, sells in, into, in, into banks, right? Um, and uh, um, they, they had did, they'd done a road show in, um, in, in, in the U.S. When, when they first went out there. Uh, and uh, and, and when, when they got to the slide saying that they're reference customers, were um, you know? Let, I'm just going to pick three, three, three names, right? It was, let's say, uh, let's say, City, J.P. Morgan, and Wells Fargo, right? Um, they, um, they, they were, they were telling me that the feedback was was that they would get some variation of the question of, well, do you mean, uh, you know, J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo and City in in Europe, or do you mean in the U.S.? And when they said in Europe, they said the feedback was, well, that we, 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 we from the, the the tone of the conversation be changed to we might as well have said, you know, uh, Waitrose and Tesco and Sainsbury's, right? right. Three, three U UK specific grocery chains, right? Um, that it really, it, you really have to prove yourself as, as a company in America, right? That, that and, and I think that is often a bit of a frustration and somewhat of a surprise to a lot of companies coming out of, out of Europe um, is that because America is is so big and to some extent um, a, to some extent self-sufficient clearly not entirely but you know to a large extent there's a lot of what America needs is is within the borders um, you know that, that there is a, a, a on average a sort of special um, focus right on on having a, on having proven a company if you're the seller um, having proven your bona fides already in, in the U.S. market. And, and so that, that's something that we try to stress to companies going in is, is that you really want, want, want to, to try to build out your, your, your U.S. credentials um, as quickly and as robustly as, as possible. That makes sense. Um, so are there um, 
Are there differences? I would imagine there are significant legal differences, whether that's in company formation or uh, transaction, uh, any of the type of uh, business law and regulation that uh, you know would be sort of highlights for major differences between uh, yeah. Europe, UK, and, and US? Yeah, I mean, there, there's one overarching difference, uh, which I think comes as a big surprise to companies coming out of um, the UK and Europe and relative to the US. And, and that is, and, and, and it seems like a fairly obscure point, but, but it actually is, it ends up being pretty, pretty, pretty meaningful, is that um, in, the, in, the, in the UK and Europe, um, if there is a legal dispute that goes to court, right, the, the loser in that dispute uh, pays both sides legal fees, um, which is a huge disincentive to actually going to court, right? Be, be, because because if you if you're not 100 percent certain that you're going to win, you know you 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 could you're you're taking a, a big risk that you could walk away, not only having lost but having paying both sides costs or a good portion of both sides costs, and and that's a pretty expensive undertaking. In the United States, however, right. Um, even for the most part, uh, with very limited exceptions, even if you win in a uh, court case, right, you pay your own legal fees. Right? Um, and what that leads to is, is, is a sit situation where you do not want to be in, 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 a, in a position where someone who has, was better funded than you, who has more resources than, than, than you, um, has the ability to leverage exposure that you might have to them. Right. Um, and, and what that means is, it, practically speaking, is that you end up taking legal advice in the U.S. on a problem avoidance basis, whereas in the U.K. and Europe, you generally take it on a pro problem solving basis. Right. The way I sometimes describe it is, is as follows. Right. In, in the U.K. Or, or Europe, it's like calling a plumber. Right. Um, if you if you have a leak. Um, you might try to fix it yourself, right? Um, and if you can't fix it yourself, you will call a plumber. In the United States, by the time you discover the leak, very often it's too late, your apartment's already flooded, right? And there, there needs to be a, there's a real premium placed on preventative maintenance and, and ensuring that you don't have the leak in the first place. That is something that is very, it feels very foreign, uh, we find, to companies outside the US. In the U.S., it's the nature of doing business, right? Because that's um, that is, that, that the the let's say council and company have very close relationships um, in 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 the U.S. On, on average, because you know the the you know legal counsel is very often thinking commercially and strategically, right? Which is how do we help the company achieve its business ob objectives while managing risk. And on the commercial side, I think there's a real focus um, on, on balance by commercial and business teams uh, in the U.S. that, yes, you know, we, we know we want to go after the business objectives, but we also have to get legal's input as, as well to make sure we're, we're, we're doing this in, in, in the most efficient manner to manage risk. And I think in, in, in the U.K. and Europe, there's a little bit more of a harder divide, right, which is that on average, the business people, the commercial people tend to handle the business of commercial and the legal tend to handle the legal um, be, because, um, you know, it is, it is a somewhat less risky environment from a legal standpoint in, 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 in Europe. Hmm. And is there, does there tend to be more mediation in Europe then or, or more in the U.S.? I think on, on, on average, what, 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 what you see, and, and, and actually I'm, I'm going to sort of summarize it um, by making a point that I sometimes make, which is I, I think in, in the UK and Europe, and I'm going to preface this by saying this is a massive generalization, sure. right? Um, but I, I do think that on balance, the, the backstop in the business relationship tends to be, um, let's say, the, the, the personal relationship, right? Be, 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 be between the, 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 the two companies. In the US, the backstop very quickly becomes the legal system. Mm -hmm. More quickly becomes the legal system. And I, that, that's a very different model of doing, do, do, doing business. And um, it's funny because I, I, I often get asked, well, which one's better? And it, I don't, I don't, it's, not, it's not a matter of being better or worse, but it is important to recognize that it's different. Right. You, I mean, it, it, and again, as a sailor, it's all about navigation, right? You have to yeah. know what waters you're in uh, right. and, and where, the, where the rocks are and, 
and uh, and, and the hazards. Uh, right? I mean, we, yeah, I mean, we, we, we see this play out a lot on, let's say, negotiation of contracts with, with the U.S. counterparties. And I think, I, and again, gross general, generalization, but I think on average, we do tend to see American companies negotiate contracts, um, you know, they, they will draw out nego contract negotiations on balance, let's say a bit longer than, than the equivalent company in the UK or Europe might. And I think, uh, you know, in, in the experience of having worked between, between the Europe on the one hand and US on the other, I, I think it, looking at it, it's, it, it's because the, the risk of that contract um, being focused on on, on, a, on, a, on a word word by word basis, right? The, 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 the likelihood of having to go back to the very specific legal language of the contract um, and, and relying on it is much greater uh, in the US um, because of that, um, not even litigation environment, but risk of litigation environment. Um, you know, then that, that leads to a much greater focus on the very specific language of the contract, let's say, than it, than it does necessarily in, in the UK or Europe. Because again, if, if, if the relationship between the companies is the, is, is the backstop, then a little bit more often, you know, the, the, they'll, they'll be able to work it out, not necessarily based, uh, you know, on a granular reading of the, um, of, of the, sp of the sp specific language of the contract, but in the, in the broader context of their, their business relationship. Oh, that's great. No, that's, it, it, uh, that's perfect. Um, so it, I, see, I seem to be going to the, uh, the nautical metaphors today, but uh, sort of thinking about navigating this process uh, and, uh, you know, uh, obviously having a resource like yourself is invaluable to companies, but how, how do you find and what's, you know, you mentioned early on uh, when, you know, there's sort of the range of type of companies that you work with, um, but when is it best for uh, companies to seek your help? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think we 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 most often start engaging with, with with companies in the UK and Europe where they 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 see the the, the US and sort of the um, you know the the near to midterm future. I, I mean. I, it, now, in, in fairness, I mean there, there are some companies. I think we, we probably first met three years before they 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 they, they launched in you know in the U.S. And, but we we built up that relationship over time. But I think where where we kind of most typically most you know formally in, in, engage is, is when a company comes to us and says, right, we're 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 being pulled into the U.S. by customer traction. You know, we're starting to negotiate some U.S. contracts. We're looking at hiring some people in the U.S. Um, so, you know, let's say sometime in the next three to six months or so, um, that's, that's usually where we have, you know, a little more, more, more formal engagement. Um, but we informally start engaging with, with companies from, I mean, even pre-seed stage onward. I mean, if, if only to sort of talk about, you know, what our experiences are with raising capital, right. Um, you know, on both sides of the Atlantic or, you know, just, you know, building a business or bu bu building, building a team. I mean, what. I think one one of the things that that you know comes from being you know being in in, in at, at a value firm, um, but if we see the same dynamics in any of the big tech hubs like a New York or a Boston, or Seattle, et cetera. You know, is that you know having worked with so many different companies over time, we we start to get a sense of you know how you, how you build a company, um, and and can at least provide a little bit of guidance on well you know this is what has worked well. Um, you know, for, you know, other, you know, these several dozen other companies that we've worked with, you know, give, give, give you some su su suggestions here, introduce you to, you know, companies, uh, you know, who, who have done this successfully, or, you know, we've negotiated, you know, X number of venture capital financings, here's a couple of investors who, you know, who might make sense, you may want to go try to connect with them, right? I mean, try to try to be helpful outside of just strictly you know the, the the legal arena and 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 you know and and provide as much you know sort of sort, sort of value add as we can even for a fair bit of time prior to more formally engaging let's say on on a u.s fundraise or a u.s setup or a u.s uh you know contract etc well i would imagine too beyond your um uh the uh the institutional knowledge that you've gained and personal knowledge that you've gained in working with uh, market entry companies, uh, and that, that knowledge being very important, I would imagine there are also a, a whole host of resources um, sort of beyond 
Wilson Sonsini that you're able to, as needed, connect your uh, client companies to uh, who can support them, whether it's with the, their accounting needs or you know, any other types of needs as well. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's that. That's something that we've um, <clears throat> we've sort of taken great care to, to build up over over over, over time. Um, is um, you know we we actually have a, a U.S. expansion checklist that that we go through with 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 companies, you know, and and we'll uh, we'll, we'll go over with them, you know, immigration and tax, insurance, banking, HR and admin, government support, right, real estate, property, you know, personnel, um, and you know, at a high level. You know, go 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 through the the main issues there. Obviously, you know, we're not a bank, we're not a, we're not a tax advisor, et cetera. Um, but at least you know, flag that these are areas that they need to cover off. And and you know, over time, we we've we've built up um, you know really really nice relationships with with others who who work on in, in in those other spaces, and you know, are sort of happy to to you know to you know make those connections where where wherever possible um you know i mean on, on an in, in, informal basis right i mean if we didn't just happen to know pe people who did good work in this area you know, that would be a, a, real, a real weakness mm -hmm. um i will i will say you know one of the things that we that we definitely try to you know go out of our way to do is um the the company you know the the one of the things that the, that a lot of the the european countries the the uk and on the continent have gotten wet have gotten right I think do a really nice job of is provide government resources, um, both in in market um, or back in the home market, right? Whether that be the UK or on the continent, uh, and in in the United States. Like for example, um, you know, it, the if it's the United Kingdom, it, it would be the Department for International Trade, um, which is the government's uh, UK government's economic development organization, um, and they're they're obviously not a, not not only in the UK, but they're on the ground in I think twelve. 11 or, 11 or 12 major cities around the U.S. with, with teams who help U.K. companies, um, you know, succeed in, in the U.S. As, as well as helping U.S. companies go to the U.K. And all, all of, the, all of the, the, the major European countries have, have similar economic development or organizations who can help uh, companies, um, you know, come out, of, come out of Germany, come out of France, come out of the Netherlands, et cetera. You know, and succeed on on, on the ground uh, in in the U.S. and and we always want to make sure that that they're that, that the companies we work with are are, are plugged in with those organizations. Mm, that makes uh, yeah, that's just perfect. And uh, yeah, DIT UK DIT is uh, they really stand out uh, for a, a trade and investment um, organization. I, I, at least the, from the ones we've met, there they really are spectacular. Um, is uh, so you know, it, and obviously, as your uh, as uh, prospective companies are meeting you, they're asking probably a variety of questions. But what what's the kind of the one question uh, that um, you uh, that you rarely hear or never hear, but you wished more companies asked? Um, <laughs> well, they, they can't all be easy questions. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I think, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the question that I sometimes get, but 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 don't I think get asked often enough, um, you know, is you know why why does everybody go to New York? Does it seem, or why does everybody go to Silicon Valley? And where else in the United States does it make sense to go? And 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 why? Right? And, and I, I do think that there is a significant percentage of the companies. Um, that we see coming out of the UK and Europe, who, 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 you know, go to you know either, either New York or the or, or the or the or the Bay Area, and those are great choices. But I also think, in retrospect, after having talked to companies, let let let's say years later, that I that I think that a lot of them wish that they had taken a little bit more time to think through different options, right? Um, and you know that that there are major centers around around the, around the United States that that may make sense for a particular business and and one one of the things that that, that we try to do is 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 walk through with 
with, with, with companies, um, you know, sort of the sort, sort of the considerations that they should be keeping in mind when deciding where to launch in the U.S., right? So th th things like proximity to HQ um, back in Europe, um, you know, the, the cost of doing business in the particular area, the, the um, let's say the state and local government incentives for, for setting up, um, you know, the type of talent that might be, be available. The proximity to investors, the proximity to customers, um, you know, the proximity to potential future acquirers, right? There's, you know, numerous different factors. I mean, there's sort of eight or so that we typically highlight um, that companies should be thinking about, about where to go in the United States. And that may, that may lead them to the Bay Area or New York, and that, that's great, but it also may lead them somewhere else. Um, and, and I, and I think that the companies I think that have been happiest with, or maybe have had the smoothest market entry are the ones that spent a good amount of time asking the, the question, why am I going, um, to this particular place in the U S and is it the right place and where is the right place to go? See, and you were worried about that question, but you hit it out of the park. That was perfect. No, oh, it, it, uh, uh, I think that was just an absolutely great way to, uh, uh, to really even uh, summarize our conversation in terms of you know you have you have to keep digging to sort of figure out the right path and and the path and the the um, uh, you know whether it's geographically where to locate or or whatnot um, it, it's really a, a discovery process for for every every company and there as you've identified so many um, really good choices but probably a short list for for every company in terms of where they should where they should be and where they should grow. Um, so, how do people get a hold of you if uh, folks listening uh, would like more information on your practice and and uh, maybe working with you? Uh, how do they get a hold of you? Um, so, I'm, I'm I I should be pretty easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. If 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 you just uh, Google my 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 name, you'll 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 come up with uh, with with my page on the Wilson Sonsini website. My my uh, email is there. You can contact contact me by email, and I'm also on 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 LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, yeah, no. For for companies look, looking to uh, you know launch scale, raise money, exit in the U.S. That that's what we do. Um, and cer certainly happy to uh, to to have a discussion. Perfect. And I'm going to, we'll, we'll make sure that your links are on all the, uh, uh, on everything that, uh, that we post, whether YouTube or podcast or whatnot. So you, it, we'll make it even easier. Uh, <laughs> for folks to talk. Um, well, good. Is there anything in closing, Dan, that you'd like to make sure people know or, or share? Um, yeah, look, I mean, the, the, the U S is uh, an incredibly exciting market to, to build a business. Um, you know, the, the um, the the upside of, of of getting it right in the U.S. and partnering with a top tier U.S. VC fund and working with fantastic uh, companies there is is just uh, is is unmatched. Um, if it's if it's the right place to if it's the right place for your for your business, um, yeah, I mean it, it makes all the sense in the world. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to stop the recording, but uh, really uh, really appreciate your time and and being with us. You got it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Our pleasure.